Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 4 of our Crossy Road series which we're making on Python. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just Finished Coding Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched parts 1 to 3, please watch them before you come here because as you can see, I'm picking up from where I left off. And for this video to make sense, you need to watch the previous ones. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm gonna assume that you've watched parts one, two, and three, in which case let's continue with our code. I'm going to start this off by um, creating two different flag objects and I'm gonna call them green flag and white flag. So since the flag is basically a sprite class, we will also need a sprite group to store these two objects in. Uh, in addition to a group, I'm going to create a list and this is going to be really helpful when we start to make uh, the flags hide and show when the cat touches them. You don't have to worry about what that does as of now. Just make sure you have the list in with those two objects inside it. So after we're done with this, we can scroll down to the main loop and here we can just simply um, draw and update the flag group onto the Pygame window. And uh, after this, you can create a new function and I'm going to call this check flags. And this is where, like I mentioned, we'll be checking whether we should hide or show the flag. And this would be solely based on the flag.visible um, variable, which is unique to each flag. So I'll simply say for flag and flags, and I'm going to loop through that list, which I mentioned earlier. And if flag.visible is, uh, is set to false, then I will basically make sure that that particular flag is removed from the sprite group. And as a result, when we're updating that group, that flag would no longer be um, visible. And same thing happens, we no longer draw it on the window. And uh, we also need an else to make sure that a flag which is visible is not hidden forever. And we can just say a flag.alive, which is gonna check if the flag is part of any group. And if the flag is part of a group, we know it's not deleted yet because we've not killed it. But if it isn't part of a group, then all we have to do is just add it back to the group and our program would work properly. So once you've added those things in, we are good to go with our function. Next, we can create a new function and I'm going to call this switch level because it's only going to apply when we are, you know, going up one level. So I'll be saying global score and this is simply because we will change the score by one later on. And I will just change the slow cars and the fast, car, uh, fast cars velocity by one. And it's obviously going to be based on the direction. So it would be negative one in one case and positive one in the other. And as usual, we would obviously have to change the score by one, otherwise the game would never end. So next I'm gonna scroll down to the main loop itself and here I will make sure that the score display and also check flags is right on top because if you don't have this in place, you will start to get some really, really weird errors in your program later on. So it's best to fix this thing right now. So now let me scroll back up to the flag class and here I'm gonna add one line of code and here I'm gonna get something called a mask. And a mask is just um, made to ensure that pixel perfect collisions are very easy to do because currently we have rectangular collisions which is fine as long as our objects are rectangles but when our objects are irregular shapes like our flag, it's pretty much stupid to do rectangular collision because a collision would be pretty easy um, to happen unintentionally. So rect collisions don't work in this case and neither do circular collisions, which is our next best option if we are not using mass. So I will be using mass and um, of course it goes without saying that mass collisions are pretty computer intensive. So it's ideally best to use them only when rect collisions and circular collisions are unsuitable. So anyway, I'm gonna create a mask and we can just get the mask from the surface image. And we also have to do the same thing for the cat as well as the car, because all of them are irregular shapes. And once we've done it for these three sprites, um, we will be ready to get into the collisions. So now within the flags update method, I'm just gonna type in self.collision. And I know I don't have a method yet, but I'm gonna start um, typing that method right now. So within self.collision, I will first be just having two global variables, I guess. 
Um, one is going to be an object, which is cat, and it may seem a bit weird, but it is necessary to do this. So just follow me along. And after this, I'll create a variable called flag hit. And this is going to be a Boolean variable, and it's going to detect whether we have um, the flag, uh, the flag, whether the flag has collided with the cat or not. So we can just use our normal sprite collide function. And uh, if you've not watched my sprites video, I highly recommend you watch it. But basically we just have to type in an object, a group, and then whether we want to kill the particular object within the group. And in this case, obviously we do not want to kill the cat, which would make no sense. Uh, it would just basically remove the cat from the cat group and we would see the cat, uh, we would no longer see the cat on the screen if we did that. So we need that third parameter to be false, but we can also add in a fourth parameter and this is, I guess, an optional parameter. And within this parameter, we can just say p dot uh, sprite dot collide mask. And this will uh, ensure that the particular mass, uh, the masks of the two sprites are colliding. And it would automatically um, take in the name self dot mask, you know, from all of your objects. So you don't have, uh, you don't even have to specify what variable you store that in. Uh, if you just have these things in place, it will ensure that our Boolean variable, which is flag dot hit, um, records that collision correctly. So now if flag hit is true, which means the collision has happened, um, we can just first of all set self dot visible to false because we don't want that particular flag or object to be visible anymore. And after this, based on the flag number, which we are using, remember green flag is one and white flag is two. And we enter that when we created the objects in case you don't remember. Um, based on these two numbers, we can just um, show the opposite flag and by show, I just mean set the flag dot visible variable to be true. And uh, I'm just going to add in another if condition. So if the score is less than five, I'll call in the switch level method, which is pretty much why I, uh, why I coded that method in this video in the first place. So you can just have that in place. And after this, we can just run our program. And when we move our cat across the screen and touch the flag, you can see that boom, our cat has touched the flag and that particular flag has disappeared. And this is pretty much how we want our game to work. And we want the score to move up whenever the cat touches the green flag, which as you can see happens pretty perfectly. And I'm gonna end this video here. It was a fairly short video, but in the next couple of videos, we'll be fine tuning our game with collisions with the car, uh, the explosion and so on. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.